Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. I think today's video is one that I could have very easily just made for my little private coaching group. Uh, and I think most of what I'll be saying here will be specifically directed at the athletes that I coach and have been having conversations with. But I think most of the information here will be really relevant to pretty much everyone. Um, it may be specific to people that I work with and, uh, and people that, that I'm having these conversations with, but I figured that the information, uh, while specific to them, would probably be useful for, for everyone to hear. So uh, I, I also think that this is a good video to follow up my previous video that I just posted about my January training program, um, because I, I put a lot of uh, my, just my thoughts on what that program, why it was written the way that it was. So talking about kind of both shoes that I, I am filling at this point. So me writing my own training, I, I was talking about why certain things were in there but also talking about my current intuition, just being two weeks into the block, and my expectations with how things are playing out, kind of what I expect for the remainder of block, kind of building off of previous experiences. And I think that every single athlete should constantly be doing that. Whether you're an athlete of mine, that's absolutely something that I'll value and I'll touch on specifics in a little bit. Whether you're following free programs or getting coaching from another person, it should still be something that is a big part of your communication with your coach and your own analysis of training. I, I think that it, it really emphasizes a number of things here. And, and I think first and foremost, it can really just be buy-in and your execution of the program. If you're not taking stock of everything that your training is trying to accomplish, the specific days, I had specific goals on every single one of those days and my expectation on how those things were going to flow. And if you're not actually being deliberate about what each day should have you feel or the opposite of how you are feeling on those days and just communicating those things with your coach or being serious if you're writing your own program, writing those things down, just taking notes, if those things aren't a big part of your process, then you're missing out on what could be humongous opportunities to be able to improve. So for me as a coach, when I'm working with people, the people that, that come in, and most of the time it's newer people, and they say, I trust you, I'm gonna do whatever you say, uh, even if it's not working, I'm gonna, I trust you, you have my, you know, my, my full belief. Uh, I, I think that that's pretty much always good intentioned, that people are coming in just willing to buy in, or, or you know, at least on the surface. They're, they're willing to say, you know more than me, I'm going to do what you say. And while that's, a, I guess, a flattering you know, uh, reaction from people, it's really not something that's beneficial. Because at that point, I'm only operating off of partial information. The only information I'm getting at that point is the information, the, the exact, you know, the, the timeline, the very short timeline of the initial training response and also my experience from other people. But many of the things, if you watched my last video, that I'm doing for myself are unique. They're, they're different from things that I've written from any other body or any other person. Many of those things also are very, very similar, right? There's a lot of things that if you work with me, you'll see in my training and many other people's training programs. And those things are things that I think work very well on a population level, but they may not work for you. And so I think every single lifter out there needs to just learn to take themselves seriously, is to apply that thought process to every single session you do and just look for how is this making me better as a lifter. Now, there's not always super deep specifics. I, I could come up with um, you know, lots of examples. Let's say, you know, why on my bench press on day one am I doing five by six? Why is it not six by six or four by six? And you know, it's uh, intuition, right? Is it something that I, I, I felt like with the percentage that I was gonna be using, the amount of volume relative to other blocks, it just felt like the right starting point. Now, from there, it, it felt like a good starting point. So now what's the next step? Is as I'm doing that session, I need to be constantly asking the question, does this feel like too much? Does it feel like too little? What could be changed? And I think when people hear that, they become, potentially worried that you know it, it can potentially lead to overthinking or uh, you know overanalyzing and not having that that buy-in really you know as full as it could be but I feel totally the opposite is that we should be going into every single session we do with full intent and trying to get the most out of that session and then retroactively after the session going back and saying 
what did I accomplish? How did this compare to previous weeks? How does this block as a whole feel relative to different sessions? Uh, I try to accomplish this things, uh, these things if you look on, uh, look on my spreadsheets. I use you know, trackers of like motivation and session intensity and things like that. And, and all of these things are asking for feedback con consistently from my athletes because on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't have those things. And, and so getting more information from people is, is really one of the strongest things that we can do to, to increase training effectiveness with people. So if you're an athlete of mine, if you're an athlete with another coach, if you're just writing your own training, following pr free programs, whatever, I would encourage every single person out there to really treat themselves as maybe, you know, coach, coach 1A and coach 1B, right? Is that you should be actively involved in the process. If you have ideas in your training, if you, if you just have kind of concepts that you would like to see explained, the more that you understand why things are going on in the, in the program and communicate with your coach, the better that the programs will be able to be written. Me personally working with people, the people that don't communicate at all, those programs are significantly harder and less fun to write. I'm essentially just guessing, right? Whether they make progress, don't make progress, I don't know why, right? I'm just, you know, throwing darts at the board and like if it works, fantastic. Uh, but the people that communicate, even the people that struggle, there's people that communicate very, very well and struggle to progress. Those people, I absolutely enjoy working with them and writing their training because it's at least a critical thinking process for me um, and, and can apply obviously to that person trying to get better, um, but also apply to other people and kind of increase my effectiveness as a coach in general. So um, anyway, yeah, I, I, I think that hopefully sums up all of my thoughts here is, is just that if you are an athlete out there, you should be taking yourself seriously. Don't just fly blindly. Don't just go into the sessions. Um, I, I think the common thing a lot of times is you, people assume they're given the program, they do the program, they get stronger. But there's lots of minutia about why certain days, pushing harder in certain places, having flexibility in certain areas, that having a deeper understanding will just increase the effectiveness of anything you do. So uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.